syphilis. In other words, a primary chancre. If you know that it looks cratered, the edges are clean. And um, if you um, <coughs> irritate this and get some serum and put in a slide, then you will be seeing a lot of uh, spirochetes. So this is primary syphilis. And that, that's where the uh, treponema entered the uh, skin, and basically that's where you get your primary syphilis. Uh, this slide, <coughs> anybody can tell me what type of method this is? The uh, fluorescence? What? Fluorescence? Fluorescent. In other words, this is using a fluorescent technique to identify chlamydia from the cervix. So the little green stuff that you see is basically chlamydia organism, and uh, the other red stuff, those are basically just cells. So in other words, if we took a specimen from the, uh, the woman's cervix and we do a direct fluorescence, this is what we would see. Are those white red cells? Yeah. Now, if you remember, I mentioned about condyloma lata. In other words, we are a patient who has syphilis, but it's in a moist area. And you get this cheesy material uh, showing up. And if you take some of this cheesy material and put it in a microscope, it'll be crawling with spirochetes. So you take care of a patient, and for some reason you see something like this, always be careful. This patient basically has syphilis, and this stage of it is referred to as condyloma lata. As opposed to when we talk about condyloma acuminata, we're talking about viral infection. Here we have a flat lesion on the penis, a couple of them. So what disease will be thinking of? Gonorrhea. You don't need to slap in your head, please. <laughs> but that's in keeping with what you did. Gonorrhea doesn't give you a lesion. Gonorrhea generally gives you a discharge. Is this herpes? How do you describe a syphilis lesion, Ms. Sanders? What? How do you describe a syphilitic lesion? It's flat. I didn't tell you no syphilitic lesion is flat, and I just repeated a while ago. Maybe I should have you repeat what you recorded, what I said about a syphilitic lesion. What did I say about a syphilitic lesion, Ms. Navarro? It's a crusted region. Crater. Crater with smooth edges. This is not crater. This is flat. Multiple. Therefore it is herpes. How is that herpes herpes was uh small? Was what? How is that herpes small? It started out a little small and then it spreads. Now it's sort of a little tiny, hurtful pimple, then it flats out, and uh, the lesions are generally multiple. It's flat, it's extremely painful. This is a, a lesion, if you notice, it's, uh, it's, it's secondarily infected, the syphilitic lesion on the lips. genital ulcers, you have syphilis primary, secondary, or tertiary, lymphogranuloma venereum, which is caused by chlamydia, a chancroid, which is caused by Haemophilus ucrae, herpes, and other types of bacterial infection. In other words, those are basically what we say ulcers. In other words, you know it's going to read it. not so bright, but that's a similar lesion on the tongue. Now, when we talk about um, a primary syphilis or a secondary syphilis, 
here you can see this guy is in secondary syphilis. And you can see the outbreaks here. If you irritate this, get some serum out of it, you will find um, spirochetes. See, they're magnified. Not as normally they're on the chest, on the face, the extremities. And that's what I said about you can make a distinction as to whether you're dealing with syphilis or you're dealing with chicken pox because they come all over your body. So two things you can do. You can do a doctor's microscopy to rule out syphilis or you can do a zank prep. In other words, to rule out chicken pox. In other words, the same virus that causes chicken pox is the same virus that causes, in the same family of virus that causes herpes. So in other words, you can uh, do a sign prep where you look for multinucleated giant cells in the epithelial cells and you can use that to make a diagnosis whether your patient has chicken pox or syphilis. So in other words, if you use a sign prep, in other words, it doesn't take you you know, you're just going to scrape the lesion, put it on a slide, stain it, and then look at it for multinuclear giant cell. You don't have to, at that point, draw blood to send to the laboratory to wait maybe 24 hours for hemagglutination tests to be done. Hemagglutination tests to be done in the laboratory to rule out chicken pox. This is when you get into tertiary syphilis, you used to get um, patches on your hands and on your feet. Here, um, this is an assimilation, in other words, a drawing of the condyloma lata, the real condyloma that I showed you before. In other words, that I showed you before is the real thing. This is a drawing just giving you an idea what they look like around the um, uh, sweaty area. This is giving you an idea, somebody in, um, in secondary syphilis, what it can do. You know, you can be easy to lose your hair, you can get uh, leukoderma, in other words, changes uh, uh, your skin, you have skin rashes, adenitis, in other words, you have pains in your, your joints, it can affect your kidney, it can affect your liver, um, you have a visceral lesion, condyloma lata that we just showed a while ago and um, genital and perianal mucus um, patches. This is a uh, treponema disease, some of the areas that it basically can affect. Um, you can, it can affect the heart because the organism can eat away at the aorta and then you could look, uh, have a, um, an aneurysm where the aorta bursts <laughs> and you can basically bleed out. The organism totally destroyed. The aorta makes it thin, <coughs> the aorta burst, and basically you're going to be done. Thank you. This is where we call um, we <coughs> the individual has um, a sympathetic lesion on both sides. In other words, you see the lesion as you spread the. Um, What's that sort of No, that's probably just some kind of thing. The lesion is right here. They generally yeah. refer to them as kissing lesions, and where they have them on both sides. Uh, that's basically the primary thing. I thought, I thought it should be, they should be like, you mentioned it should be cratered, right? Hmm? Cratered? Yeah, but I guess it's from the way the, if you, if you, if you look at it, is that it's where the camera is, you can basically see that you have the edges here. Let's give you a clean edge and a clean crater like the first one that I showed. In other words, you, have, you can see looking right down and then you see a nice uh, crater here, you know, see that one. It's all called goma, in other words, in a later stage of syphilis where you can have, um, this thing is an immunological reaction where you have like a horseshoe shows up on uh, different uh, areas of the skin. Here, syphilis not only causes sex, um, 
Um, it's, a, it's a disease which is referred to as the great imitator. As we refer to, um, which other disease we refer to as a great imitator? Huh? Okay. Mimic. Mimic. No. Lyme disease. Syphilis rabbit is a great imitator because it imitates so much so many other diseases. Lyme disease also can be considered sometimes we say it's referred as an imitator because it mimics other disease. Now here this guy has coronaretinitis caused by uh, treponema pallida. Coronaretinitis can be also caused by chlamydia. It can also be caused by some of the different amoeba, acant amoeba, uh, and so forth. So he here has a coronaretinitis caused by treponema pallida. This organism is the strongyloides. Um, as we mentioned when we talked about strongyloides, the last time we said it can be classified into sexually transmitted disease, but this organism, in other words, can cause auto-inoculation. It simply means the organism is leaving the body. It um, can hatch before it leaves the body, hatch in the rectum, reinfected the individual, consider the bloodstream, travel up to the lung, and uh, back into the intestines. However, when some of these uh, individuals are on certain drugs, it can trigger the organism to begin to migrate. When the organism begins to migrate, it's migrating from the intestines. It can get into the bloodstream, it can get into the sputum, and when it gets into the sputum and into the, it is carrying the normal flora from the intestines. And ladies and gentlemen, by the way, looking through some of your papers, I see at least four people, the first question we ask about organism, the answer to that is normal flora. In other words, it's not an organism as such, a staphylococci or a e. coli, whatever it is. The answer is when you find these organisms in different orifices, the organ, what we're asking for is normal flora. What is it called? Normal flora. Not staph, not E. coli, not strep. Normal flora. So this organism will carry the normal flora of the gastro, from the gastrointestinal, take it into the bloodstream. If it takes it into the bloodstream, you're going to end up with bacteremia or septicemia can take him into the lung, and you can end up with um, pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And the same organism, as I said, it hatches in the rectum. If you're having rectal sex, the organism can penetrate the penis and basically infect an individual who has never traveled out of the country into an area where you have strong lower historic heart, heart. Mm. Well, if you can read sideways, the different cures that people use for herpes. In other words, snake venom, ether, vitamin oil, minerals, wholemeal compressor, red seaweed, scotch, yogurt, and until it's portion. And now, for your knowledge coming to the end of microbiology, which one of those would you think would work? One of them could work. The knowledge of microbiology, could you tell me which one would work? Herpes. If you got to use one. Mr. the side. Uh, Berkeley. Which one do you think has a chance of working? alcohol. The herpes virus does have, in other words, could dissolve, in other words, the covering of it. So it could help destroy the herpes. So the scotch, you'd have to use your expensive scotch, man. Blue later, right? <laughs> but that's some of the things that people do use, but of course the drug of choice is? What? It's like a This is a baby born with 
hygienical syphilis. 